As the newest Halo game, Halo Infinite has been somewhat divisive. If we go over to Reddit, we'll see posts like this one from Quillos that says Halo Infinite is a new industry low. But there's also people like Westosaurus who say Halo Infinite is actually good. Or there's Deleted who says, I want to have sexual intercourse with the West. Hey everybody, I'm a frog and today we're talking Halo Infinite. Specifically the campaign because I'm more of a campaign person and I hadn't touched this game's campaign since launch. The title of this video is, Was Halo Infinite's Campaign Better Than I Remember? Which may suggest that I hated Infinite's campaign when it came out, but I actually liked it. Just not not as much as the original games, hence me still going back to them regularly while only beating Infinite once and then never touching it again. But now a couple years later, I decided to play through it again and share my thoughts in this video on what I like about Infinite's campaign and what I don't like. There will be story spoilers. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. You know what, actually don't. This is my video, I don't care what you people think. Oh man, let me get Arbiter Fan 420s opinion on Infinite, I could not care less. <laughs> As I was saying, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you never miss a frog video. Let's jump in. Infinite starts out with the cinematic showing a new Halo ring as well as the Infinity, the main ship from the last two games, getting obliterated. But what stands out here immediately is the art style. They famously for Infinite brought back the old Halo art style, so for example, the Master Chief actually looks like the Master Chief rather than whatever this is. There were a lot of jokes about Infinite's graphics when the original gameplay trailer came out. There was the infamous Craig meme, rest in peace, but as a finished game, Infinite looks fantastic. From the ring and the environments, the characters including enemies, the weapons and vehicles, visually it's a beautiful game. I do think it has one major issue in this regard though that will get back to here in a bit. In the opening cinematic, Atriox, leader of the Banished, beats Master Chief and leaves him for dead until six months later when he's picked up by the Pelican Echo 216, piloted by this dude. Unfortunately, they're found by the Banished warship Gerbak, Gerbakken, Gerbakken, Gerbak, Elvis Gerbak. Chief heads off to board the warship armed with a pistol that only has one bullet, and I'll just say that this is one of my favorite Halo cutscenes, period. Visually, Master Chief floating around the wreckage, checking marine bodies, the minimalistic music score with the piano, the dialogue, I love the you have one bullet against an entire army, it's enough exchange. You have one bullet against an entire army? What can you do on your own? I told you. It's enough. It's great. This game starting off feels like classic Halo. I remember having a similar feeling playing this opening for the first time as I did playing, say, Halo 3 for the first time. I love everything about this. And then when the level actually starts, it plays really well. Infinite, I think, has great core gameplay that not only would I say is hands down the best of any 343 Halo game, but I would put it right up with Halo 1, 2, and 3. One of the big complaints about Halo 5's combat was that it felt too trend hoppy with the Spartan abilities like the thruster pack and didn't feel like Halo anymore. I prefer classic Halo combat over 5's, but I understand why those things were added to try to make the game play faster, because although I and probably you watching love it, for kids now, a game like Combat evolved is slow and boring. Infinite is obviously a faster game than Halo CE, but I think it undeniably feels like Halo in the same way that Halo 2 plays a lot differently than Halo CE, but you can see the progression from one to the next. With Infinite, similar to the art style, it feels like a return to form and more of an evolution on old school gameplay rather than something completely new. And going around room to room and worship Cabracken with the sidekick pistol and a saw rifle that isn't completely worthless in the new grapple hook is a lot of fun. Also, side point, one of my biggest complaints in my Halo 4 video was ammo scarcity. So here, I'll just mention that whoever's idea was to place down general ammo crates for the different weapon types is a literal genius. It lets you carry UNSC weapons throughout levels and not have to drop them after your first firefight. Story-wise, you learn here that Atriox died sometime between your fight with him and you waking up. Spoiler alert, no he didn't. And the new leader of the Brutes is this dude, Eshiram. But anyway, you scuttle the ship, have this epic escape. I suck. And despite Echo 216's protest, get dropped off on Zeta Halo to pick up a weapon. But not just any normal weapon, a clone of Cortana that doesn't know she's a clone that was used to kill Cortana because in Halo 5, Cortana was a homicidal maniac who wanted to take over the galaxy. Speaking of which, Halo 5's story was generally pretty hated, especially the Cortana thing, so what 343 opted to do for Infinite was resolve all of that off screen. In Infinite, you're on Zeta Halo in the aftermath of this giant battle that Halo 5 was setting up. I think it's a little weird, but it does let this game have a bit of a mystery element in regards to what happened exactly, and like I said, most people hated Halo 5 story, and I'm not really a story person at all, so I don't really have strong feelings on it one way or the other. Just worth mentioning. Back to the weapon, you pick her up and put her inside your head, and she's with you the entire game just like Cortana. But she's not exactly the same, personality-wise. Being a new clone, she's more childlike than the original Cortana. For example, Cortana had humor, but it was more dry and sarcastic. The Prophet of Regret is planning to activate Halo. Are you sure? I shall light this holy ring. Release its cleansing flame and burn a path into the divine beyond! Pretty much. The weapon is pretty direct, like your typical comic relief character. Oh, wait! You're being sarcastic! He's fun! 
fun. I like him. So rather than being Master Chief's purple AI girlfriend like Cortana, the weapon presents more of a father-daughter dynamic. Back to the actual level, Foundation, it's good. You're inside a part of the ring and it's a nice looking environment, but once again we'll shelve that and I'll have more to say about that here in a bit. Foundation ends with your first boss fight of the game against Tremonius. This game, Infinite, brought back boss fights. And uh, I've been talking about Infinite paying respect and bringing elements from the older games back, but this is probably the last thing I would have wanted them to bring from Halo 2. I hate the boss fights in Halo 2 and I am not a fan of any of them in this game with the exception of the monitor boss fights. Those I thought were fine. But after beating Tremonius, you get out on the ring to the mission Outpost Tremonius, where you have to clear the outpost and claim it back for the UNSC. Afterwards, you fly in a pelican to capture a forward operating base, and then you're introduced to the open world and the various missions and objectives there are, and this is where Infinite really opens up. Infinite is the first ever open world Halo game, and to let you know where I'm coming from, the last open world game that I played was Fallout 4, and I thought it was okay. I was a big fan of Skyrim and Far Cry 3 back in the day, otherwise open world games aren't really my cup of tea. However, and this could just be because I don't really play open world games, but I like the side objectives and the missions here. It doesn't feel like something you have to do, but it's more just extra things you can do alongside the main missions, although there are unlocks that come with doing them. Completing objectives like marine rescues gets you valor, and you can call in more types of weapons and vehicles at forward operating bases, or collecting Spartan cores lets you upgrade your shields and abilities. But yeah, running around and deciding like, I'm gonna save this marine squad, or oh look, there's a high profile target to take out, or maybe I'll do one of the fortress missions scattered around was an element I enjoyed. For this playthrough, I only did about an hour and a half of side objectives, but when I originally played a couple years ago, I did almost all of them, so yeah, I liked what's available to do in the open world for sure. There are a few more main missions after Outpost Tremonius that, to me, all bleed together. My first playthrough of this game originally, I did one of the side missions where you destroy silos and blow up the Banish base, and another one where you free prisoners, but I couldn't distinguish between these missions and the actual story missions that take place in the open world, like Tower or Excavation Site. The only thing really that differentiates those is the boss fights, and actually the most memorable thing about the Tower for me was a glitch where I never got a prop to open a door and got stuck. Why did Bonnie do this? The next somewhat interesting level is Conservatory. Not because of the environment, it looks exactly the same as Foundation, but there's more Cortana backstory, you're introduced to new enemy class, and you meet the squid lady, the Harbinger, who's one of what's called the Endless. At one point in the game, the Endless are mentioned by Cortana in a flashback as being worse than the Flood, which I think is pretty stupid. It's established that the Flood were a threat so overwhelming the Forerunners had to kill themselves in the entire galaxy to stop them, to turn around and be like, but actually there was this other race that was even worse. Yeah, that's dumb. On a more positive note, because I've now been on a run of things I don't like, I like the weapons in this game. At least in the campaign, I can't speak to them in multiplayer. The classics like the Assault Rifle, Battle Rifle, Sniper Rifle, and so on, they're all great. I like that the Battle Rifle went back to its old design instead of this monstrosity, and it and the rest of the old weapons feel good to shoot bad guys with. The new pistol, the sidekick, I really like. The Commando was good. The shock weapons were cool, even though the Disruptor was pretty worthless, and the plasma weapons like the Pulse Carbine or Stalker Rifle were totally fine. The only weapon I didn't like was the Bulldog, the new shotgun. It feels way too underpowered, even in close range it still wasn't very effective. In the next mission, Spire, there were a couple hunters guarding the entrance and I took advantage of one of the new mechanics, the ability to throw fusion coils, which is a great addition to the sandbox. On top of the Spire, you have one of the two boss fights that I didn't hate. This is followed up by Pelican Down, which I thought was a fine level, it's the one shown off in the original Craig the Brute gameplay trailer. It does have the issue where taking place in the open world, it feels too much like everything else, but it is what it is. In the past, I've jokingly called Halo Infinite Halo the level the game, referring to the level Halo from Combat Evolved, where you just go around this grassy environment saving marines. But that's really what this game is, it's that level made into an open world. One of the issues that arises here, and probably my biggest issue with Infinite Period, is the sameness of everything. The entire open world looks the same. The banished structures, whether it's on the warship Gabracken or the House of Reckoning, look the same. The Forerunner interiors, like in Foundation, like later on in the game, look the same. One of the best things about the original Halo ring was all the different environments you go to. You start off in this grassy valley before going to a desert plateau, then a beach, then a snowy canyon, then a swamp. The complaint that people did have about CE was that the second half didn't add more variety, it just goes back through the environments you've already seen. Infinite is the same environment throughout the open world and variations on the same structures in some of the actual missions. Which, it may have been difficult for them to work in different environments, but Skyrim has different environments. There are forests, there are plains, there are snowy mountains, there's variety that Infinite just doesn't have. Don't get me wrong, like I said, I liked running around the world and doing the different objectives, and I don't fault them at all for trying out an open world. They were trying to capture the feeling of stepping out onto the Halo ring for the first time and getting to explore and make that into an entire game. I think it was a good idea, but I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been to say the least. 
One mission I did not like was the sequence. This whole mission was flying a really long way to a Forerunner structure, killing a few enemies, getting a piece of a sequence to unlock a door, and then flying a really long way to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Which, again, I think this is a consequence of the open world, because generally flying levels in Halo games are great, and the freedom to fly around and explore is a good thing. But here, there's nothing really to explore. Again, the entire world looks the same. My only motivation was to not let the Banshee blow up, because going to each structure on foot or in a ground vehicle would have sucked and taken a long time. After getting the sequence, and unlocking the door to the Nexus, you navigate more Forerunner hallways that look exactly like previous Forerunner hallway levels, and a bit later on the weapon is fighting off the Harbinger and Master Chief tries to delete her. She, understandably, is not very happy and doesn't get why he doesn't trust her. But a couple levels later, she watches a flashback from Cortana destroying a planet, makes a puzzled face that would be good for a clickbait thumbnail about Halo Infinite being a disaster, and realizes she's a Cortana clone and wants Master Chief to commit Minecraft on her. He doesn't, though, and says that they're a team. A little bit later on, we move on to a tank mission called The Road. This was a really short mission, but boy, the tank in this game rules. Really, in all of 343's games, the tank has been great. They pretty much just copy-pasted the Halo Reach tank, which is not a backhanded compliment because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The reason we're driving on the road is to go to the House of Reckoning to save Echo 216. Once inside the House of Reckoning, there are a couple holdout fights that are kind of lame, but they do introduce a new kind of Giga Hunter that were pretty tough. But this level is memorable for a couple reasons, both being boss fights. The first is against the Blade Master. Had this game come out when I was still a kid, I never would have finished it because this dude would have terrified me. Even as a grown man, this was a really tense fight, and I did a lot of standing in the corner with my back against the wall. Eventually, after googling what to do, I read that you can shred him with a shotgun even though it's pretty bad generally, and that's what I did. The Eshram fight I remembered being really hard, but I got it first try no problem this playthrough. For the record, I played this game on normal. I cannot imagine trying to beat these bosses on legendary. That does not sound fun at all. That sounds like the opposite of fun. But anyway, you free Echo 216, go to the last level that looks exactly the same as the other Forerunner structure levels, you find out what happened to Cortana, the Harbinger shows up and is like, my power is beyond your comprehension. You cannot hope to defeat me. Then you shoot her and she dies. Cortana shows up to say goodbye, again. Then later the weapon asks Echo 216 his actual name and he points out the weapon doesn't even have a name. She says she has an idea but she doesn't actually say it. But it's probably Cortana. And that's the game except Atriox is still alive. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so Infinite's campaign. It's probably reflected by how I talked about the last several levels of the game, but it does start to feel repetitive and boring the further you get into the campaign for the same reason I've already mentioned that's really the fundamental problem with Infinite. There's just not enough variety. There's not enough different things. They nail the core gameplay. The 30 seconds of fun that Jamie Griezmer talked about, the core gameplay loop that you build everything else around, Infinite has that, but they simply didn't do enough to build around it. They have encounters that feel different, whether it's the environment, whether it's how you have to approach the encounter, just anything. I complain about the boss fights, but the boss fights really are the only change-ups, which I think sucks because I don't like them. Infinite was pitched as a live service game, so upon beating it the first time and part of why I never came back to it, I was expecting some kind of updates, DLC, something to add on to the campaign. Like, maybe there will be a Flood DLC, Maybe an update where you fight Atriox, maybe they'll add different biomes or new parts of the map with more side missions, something. But it never happened, and I never came back. I'm not a multiplayer person, but I have heard through the grapevine that the multiplayer side of the game has gotten a lot of love lately, which I'm glad to hear. I did play Infinite Multiplayer with friends at release too, really liked it, but got bored because there just wasn't enough stuff. So I hope 343 gets to a point where they can start adding to the campaign as well. So my final verdict on Infinite's campaign is I do really like it, but it feels like a foundation for something truly great. A foundation that, due to turmoil at 343, unfortunately wasn't ever built on, but playing it again after not playing it for a long time was a lot of fun. I did like it better than Halo 5, and to hear my thoughts on Halo 5, click the video on screen. I'll catch you next time.